Now, I'm uh, here with Wes Clark Jr. from the Wes Clark Jr. Show on YouTube, and uh, he's joined the program today to talk about climate change. Now, there was a recent article out in The Guardian talking about the rate of warming that's been happening and how it's got one of the top scientists at NASA incredibly concerned. Now, he write, now uh, The Guardian writes, This year has already seen scorching heat around the world, with the average global temperature peaking at about 1.38 Celsius, above levels experienced in the 19th century. Now, they say that's really close to the 1.5 degree limit uh, agreed upon in the landmark Paris Climate Accord. Now, I don't, I don't know if a lot of people have noticed, but it's been super hot out lately, right? July was actually one of the warmest months since modern record keeping began in the year of 1880, with each month since October 2015 setting a new high mark for that heat. Now, you've probably noticed this as well, right, Wes? Oh, yeah. No, well, I got to say, um, Los Angeles hasn't been incredibly hot this year. That's a surprise. Not where I live. But, you know, I, I see the temperatures everywhere else. And looking at the article, you know, when they talked about signing this treaty a year or two ago, they said, oh, we're going to hold it to 1.5 degrees, you know, to under 2 degrees by the turn of the century. We're already at 1.5 so we're about 30 or 40 years ahead of what the optimists were saying just two and three years ago. But if you go back to what Hansen said, and he's the fellow who testified in, in Congress in the late 80s that climate change is happening, they're predicting a much more rapid rise. You know, right now we're also at a, at a solar minimum. The sun goes in nine to 11 year cycles. Mm -hmm. So right now we're getting a kind of minimum of solar energy. But in the 2030, uh, 2020s, that's really going to ramp up. Right. You know, we're, we're also, it should be noted that we're in the middle of a La Nino cycle as well. So that will bring temperatures a little bit up. But you're, you, you're absolutely right. No, no. They've, they've actually discounted the influence of El Nino and La Nina in the temperature uh, extremes for this year. Oh, they have. It, it's mainly, yeah, no, they have. They've already, they've already said okay. no, that can't account for it. It's, it's an increase of carbon in the atmosphere. I mean, you saw in news reports just mm -hmm. two and three months ago that we've already passed 400 parts per million. Right. Which they also didn't think we could pass for another 20 or 30 years. And so, to to fight these changes, because what will happen is we're kind of at the start of a really extreme spike and. It's something where I don't know if you noticed another article a few months ago. They predicted people aren't even going to be able to live in places like the Middle East, possibly as soon as twenty or thirty years. Well, you've seen you know, some they, of the they had the... temperatures that were, mm -hmm. you know, almost fifty degrees uh, Celsius routinely through the Middle East this year, which is abnormal. Now add it, you know, just another two or three degrees. It doesn't take that many really hot days till people start dropping. Right. I was going to mention, too, all the record temperatures that have been set in, in places like, as you mentioned, the Middle East. There was also uh, record temperatures in Australia and in different places. Um, and, and just the land being warmer um, than any time that, that, that it's been throughout our, our recent history. This whole article pointed out that we haven't seen temperatures like this since the last thousand in the last thousand years. I mean that's yeah, amazing. It's 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 alarming because also the effects on temperature are delayed. So the temperature effects we're dealing with now are from carbon put in the atmosphere 20, 30, 40 years ago. Mm -hmm. It's got nothing to do with the last, you know, 10 or 15 years where the oceans soaked up a lot of this heat. The ocean's done. You've got the permafrost in Russia melting and venting methane, which is even a more potent greenhouse gas. Right. And it's not the number one issue in the U.S. presidential campaign. That's actually what I wanted to talk about right now, getting into the politics of it, because that's, that's kind of what we do here, is uh, we've got one presidential candidate that doesn't even believe climate change is a thing. Donald Trump thinks it's a hoax created and perpetrated by the Chinese to hurt American businesses. He says uh, he wants to rip up the, the Paris Accord, which at this point, doesn't seem to be doing much good anyway. It's a non-binding agreement that we're already almost breaking anyway because we're not doing things fast enough. And then you've got the other side. You've got Hillary Clinton, who, yes, is 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 better on this issue 
And and that's, I mean, you can't really debate that, that she is at least better because she believes in the science, but her policies don't go far enough. She's uh, a, a chief you know, proponent of, of fracking. She um, promoted it when she was at the State Department. She has all these lists and conditions of, you know, I won't, I, I won't ban it unless it's proven unsafe and all this stuff. Well, we already have proof that it's, it's rather unsafe and that this is a problem. Um, a lot of methane wells are vent, or methane wells. Well, a lot of fracking wells vent methane into the atmosphere. And as you said, it's a, it's a much more potent greenhouse gas. And so that's a problem. We don't really have much of a choice when it comes to the selection as far as the bold action that we need to take on climate now. I mean, do you agree? Well, we're not even close to, to where we need to go. I mean, you need to stop mm -hmm. fracking entirely. Mm -hmm. You need to basically put a tax on carbon. You need to use powers of state to build renewable energy resources. Look, the, the system didn't become this way by chance. You know, President Carter launched renewable energy initiatives back in the 70s, and Reagan promptly killed them when he came into office. Right. What's basically happened is the influence of money in politics has, and, and let's not kid ourselves, state utilities are the mm -hmm. most politically plugged in organizations in any state. They control everything. No pun intended. Uh, no, no pun intended. They do because, you know, they've been along, they've been around for 80 to 90 years. They're heavily regulated by the government, so they're tied in with the government anyway. And some of that regulation, of course, in any industry is regulation to protect itself. Right. So there's been a concerted effort for years to prevent renewable energy from being available to people uh, and being able to put it on the grid because it doesn't make them money. Yeah, it's so the same way we fund wars in the Middle East and abroad to protect the interests of oil companies mm -hmm. and the free flow of oil, which is, like it or not, destroying the planet. And it's not a long-term, 150 years down the road issue, it's you will see devastating effects in the next 10 or 15 years. I mean, if people are worried about the flow of migration to places like North America and Europe now, give it another 15 years oh, when yeah. the effects of climate change are really being felt in the tropics. So can we both uh, pretty much agree that we can do something about this, we can do something about this today? As, uh, and I'm not saying you and, you and I, that we can contribute, but I mean us as, as a society, as, as nations. We can do something, but we lack the political will due to the influence of money in politics, right? Abs absolutely. Look, it, it's, it also comes down to an issue, and, and these are issues of how the greater economy works. I've met people with some pretty amazing inventions, but at the same time, having a great idea and something that's an interesting engineering feat and being able to build a profitable business out of it, those are two entirely different things. Mm -hmm. And so you do need government help and government intervention to change the, the system and the way the market works now towards a, a more renewable system, which is possible. I mean, look, just off the shelf, we have almost everything we need between wind power, solar, you know, people talk about waves, but there haven't been enough large-scale uh, generators using wave power yet. But the technology is there to fix these problems now. It comes down to a question of money and allocation of resources. And then, of course, who, whichever executive is going to put these things into motion, you're going to be fighting a very well-oiled, pun intended, <laughs> uh, money machine. Right. Yeah, and, and that... I mean, those factors, I mean, this is, this is why we, we're, we're not moving forward with this. I mean, with, it, it, I want to kind of bring up subsidies, right? Because we tend to give a lot of subsidies over to, and, and we are giving some to renewable energy resources, at least in states where they haven't banned that practice. Um, and that seems to happen a lot in conservative states. Um, subsidies, I mean, without the subsidies... It's actually more expensive to do things like coal and, and oil and natural gas than it is to do renewable energy. It's gotten to the point of where solar is actually seems to be cheaper. Well, um, especially if you get into the true cost, right. which is the pollution right, and yeah. the effects of climate change. It's much cheaper to use other forms of energy. But you understand, 
it's, it's a question of, you know, money on the one hand and on the political side, people like Donald Trump or people mm -hmm. who believe this is a hoax or, or not talk. really happening, it, it comes down to more or less dogma on their behalf that almost no amount of evidence is going to sway them. So, so that leads me to what, what we can do. What can we do to, to try to instill this political will into our politicians that don't seem well, to want to move? You can, you can check out the climate mobilization at climatemobilization.org and get involved. They're going to have a series of uh, marches and, and you're gonna, it's going to have to be you know, direct action in real protest movements. Mm -hmm. in order to force the hands of the politicians. Because you also have to understand, most of these people running the country are in their 60s and 70s, and for them, it's not going to happen in their lifetime. But, you know, when I look at my 11 and 12-year-old sons, I know it's going to happen in theirs. Mm -hmm. And it's going to happen when they're in the prime of their life, about 30. You know, the crop's only got to fail once till you have a problem. Right. All right. Um, I've kept you uh, long enough, Wes. I want to thank you again for, for coming on the show. Um, no, I, I just I, I put that out there this yeah. morning just because I, I try and put everything out there just to tell people seriously, this is it, the climate doesn't care what we think of it. Mm -hmm. It's going to keep changing. This is a question of physics and chemistry. It's got nothing to do with political ideology. And unless we as a society and it has to be a society. Individual actions don't mean anything. Right. They, they, it, they make people feel great and they make people feel righteous, but unless you do it society-wide, it's negligible. Because yeah. for every person out there who is green and trying to be renewable, there's 10 who are you know, drinking the can of Coke and throwing the can on the side of the road. So we all, we all have to get together for, for uh, the continuation. And I know it sounds dire, and I know it sounds like, oh, come on, Jeff, right? But we have to get together, get together for the survival of our species, the long oh, there's term. No, dude, there's no question. The, the, the British government yeah. did a study a year ago. They predicted a collapse of civilization in the 2030s. That's the opinion of mm -hmm. Her Majesty's you know, chief science advisor. Yeah, we've got to treat this like a, 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 a large-scale mobilization, a worldwide mobilization. Oh, you yeah, know. no, it's, it's more important than any war we've ever fought. Exactly, exactly. There's it's, no it's... question. Well, listen, Jeff, uh, I, I urge people look into climatemobilization.org, join up, sign up. The more people who are out there raising their voices, the better. The politicians are never going to take it seriously mm -hmm. because, look, <laughs> doing good in the world doesn't always pay money. That's true. That's very true. And they're mainly about money, and they support money. And this isn't a money problem. This is a science problem and collective action problem. Absolutely. All right. Thank you, uh, Wes Clark Jr. We can find you on the uh, Wes Clark Jr. show over at the Lip TV. Where and I'll be doing uh, Old School tomorrow night with Cenk. Awesome. Awesome. Thanks again for your time, man. I appreciate it. Hey, you got it, bro. Take care. All right. You too. Hey, everybody. If you like this video, then please like this video and share and if you want to see more like this then please hit that subscribe button below